How's it going, Grey Boys? It is that time again, preseason, the beginning of the year, and this one is either going to go really well or really poorly, and I think that all hinges on whether the new players that we picked up in the offseason uh, turn out to actually be any good. Now, one thing that we did change, uh, a channel member used the ability to rename a recruit, and Fred Bell, our cornerback recruit, uh, he's been renamed to kind of honor a Grey Boys legend. Ron Johnson, the first, played for Eastern Michigan in the 70s, was drafted by the Steelers in the first round in 1978, and won two Super Bowls with that Steelers team. Uh, I think Super Bowl 13 and 14. So his grandson, Ron Johnson III, has shown up and already starting pretty strong. 95 speed, 84 acceleration is going to be pretty lethal uh, in a, a few years' time. And he comes in with uh, pretty decent coverage stats as well. 80-man coverage can only go up from there with an 85 zone. He's got that 85 press, highest on the team. His tackling could maybe use uh, a little bit of work, but he's got decent hit power for a corner. Uh, and while he's a little bit fast, he is a little bit weak. The weakest corner uh, on the team, 43 strength. What we need is for our coordinators to get their prestige up so that these guys have a higher chance of improving in the offseason. Uh, but just wanted to get that out of the way. If anybody was looking for Fred Bell, he's now honoring a Grey Boys legend. So let's uh, let's get into some of this uh, preseason stuff. We'll look at recruits last because that's just always the order that I do it in. But uh, we're going to redshirt probably a few players. Obviously, Maurice Tate is going to play. Uh, and I think we're going to throw him straight into the deep end. At running back, uh, I'm tempted to sit Derek Bentley. I mean, we have a senior... A redshirt senior, a redshirt senior, a redshirt senior, and then a redshirt freshman. So Jerome Simmons is the same overall, but quicker. Uh, Derek Bentley, you know, like the type of car. Pretty, pretty beefy car. Pretty beefy running back. 6'3", 226. Uh, a power back. So he's awfully slow. Honestly, might make a good fullback, but I think that we're going to sit him this year. Just feel like with Durham Finch... Uh, and Stan Williams and Jerome Simmons, we have maybe better options to work with. And with these guys, especially being in their senior years, we're going to allow them to use that seniority and the experience that they've built up. And hopefully that's enough to get us through. Uh, probably same thing here with Steve Vincent, the fullback that we brought in. He's only 60 overall, which honestly isn't bad for a fullback, but we'll sit the, uh, the Juco transfer. He's a junior. We can sit him this year, maybe try to bring in another fullback uh, freshman or something to sit behind him next year, uh, and then just use Jeremy Robertson and maybe occasionally Courtney Smith as well. At wide receiver, uh, a lot of freshmen up here early on the board. Brandon Lane, Jeff Fontenot, and Kyle Wilson, all true freshmen, you know, all pretty good. So we won't be sitting them because we need the depth. But if we go way down here, uh, Mike Tyler, uh, junior guy, 68 overall, we're going to sit him. And uh, Vince Young, maybe not the same Vince Young that everybody else would expect him to be, but uh, we're going to sit the freshman from Bridgeport, Michigan, six foot, 188 pounds, and only 67 overall. So uh, hopefully next year he'll be more of an asset to us. And we have a couple of guys even worse. We have, <laughs> I should have cut a couple of wide receivers because we have about half a million of them on our roster and i didn't realize that meanwhile just the two tight ends zach wilson obviously is playing this year uh and hopefully we don't need to rely on brian curtis too much i don't think we have the depth at the offensive line to sit any of these guys uh it's gonna be a difficult year for them so fingers crossed that the line play can do okay because oh man it's it's a struggle it is a big struggle. And then you get to the defensive line, our left end and right end. There are more than enough of these guys. Unfortunately, they're the better players, so we're not going to sit them. But a defensive tackle? No. They're the better players, so we can't afford to sit them. Linebacker-wise, I think it's kind of a similar situation where uh, the younger players are better, with the exception of Jay Smith. 65 overall. We're going to redshirt him for now because he's not going to see the field otherwise. And eh, if there's some sort of disaster next year, maybe he can be useful. 
uh, corner-wise. We did pick up a couple of freshmen. I will sit Lorenzo Pope. 63 overall, a little bit slow, but a hard hitter. We'll let him develop for a season. And uh, Nick Allen, the walk-on, I don't want him playing, so we'll redshirt him. And I don't think we can afford to redshirt any of our strong safeties. So there is the redshirting for this year. We're definitely another season away from really starting to form up. But, I mean, it's our second season as the head coach of the team, so we can't expect all that much. I looked through, and I do think the only thing that we're going to change with the depth chart is our kick returning and punt returning. Uh, let's take a look at some speed. Sean Mitchell and Durham Finch Jr. I don't think that we can afford to have Durham Finch return kicks, even though he probably is the best candidate. It's just that we can't afford to have him using his stamina on kick returns when he's our best in our starting running back. Uh, and so that puts me in a weird spot. Do we go with the higher speed, but the much lower acceleration? Or do we go with the slightly lower speed, but better acceleration? I think we're going to stick Frank Blair as our starting return man. And we're actually going to put uh, Ron Johnson the third. Where is he? At the, the backup spot. So late in games or if Frank gets injured or something. Well, the freshman's going to get a chance to return kicks. So depth charts were easy. How about our custom schedules? The one thing that was pretty much unanimous is that we are going to play Florida. So we'll remove them from that week 11. And we're going to play them week one. Uh, there was some conflicting opinions, whether we play an easy school week one as a kind of a, a tune-up, a chemistry building game. But we're just going to throw these guys straight into the fire. Uh, the one thing that we will do is change the location. And I'm going to kind of do what uh, Oregon and Georgia are going to do next year, where it's a, <laughs> a neutral site game, except it's a neutral site kind of in the backyard of the other team. Uh, if you don't know, the Ducks are going to be playing Georgia in a neutral site game to open up the season next year uh, in Atlanta. So, you know, a true neutral site, just like we're going to go uh, with the Camping World kickoff. You know, Florida not having to go too far especially compared to us. Uh, this one, I think, is played in Orlando at, obviously, Camping World Stadium. So a neutral site there, but we will be the away team. I think that makes sense, especially considering Florida is the number one team in the country. Uh, we were keeping our game against Army, and I think that we're going to keep that on the road as well. This is going to be a very difficult year for us. It's just this third game. It's going to be a home game, but there was a ton of of different teams suggested. I saw a lot of UCF. I saw some Texas. Um, I saw like a Rutgers. We could, you know, replace them. So I'm just not certain. Honestly, I think that I'm just going to randomize it. So I'm just going to start to scroll through uh, and we'll stop it here in a second. And we are going to be playing in week four of the season at home against Boise State. Okay, Grave Boys versus Blue Boys or something like that. Again, keeping this game at home. We got an A-plus strength of schedule, which means even if we lose two games like we did last year, uh, we should get more of the benefit of the doubt. I mean, look at this. The preseason rankings. We got number one, Florida. Number 12, Army. Uh, number 21, Minnesota. The first three games all against ranked opponents all on the road. We've got a number 18, Nebraska, a ranked Michigan, number six on the road, a number three, Penn State, number 15, Michigan State. And then even our non-ranked opponents aren't bad. Maryland probably won't be great. Indiana might not be great. Ohio State has struggled in this dynasty, but I still think they're a high overall team, so it's not going to be easy. Boise State and Iowa are no cakewalks. <laughs> this is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be a hard season to say the least. So hopefully we can at least have a winning season, but I'm not entirely certain. Um, I guess we'll get to the recruiting. I'm curious to see if there's going to be any top 100 players that want to play for us in any capacity, even like a top five, which we have that the number six player in the country or in the, in the class, Dion Rhodes from North Royalton, Ohio, has us as his fifth, but... Teal Boys as his third. I almost said as our third because I saw the Teal Boys logo and it just kind of came to me. So maybe he likes my body of work. Playing time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, sign me up. We are getting Dion Rhodes, the athlete. Uh, his skills, what is he good at? He's not a quarterback athlete, which is good. Maybe a running back. Good carrying, decent catching. And he's relatively quick. Uh, 4 4 8 40. 
not the best squat. Okay, bench. Well, we'll see when we scout him, but this could be very interesting. And Jasper Vinson. Well, maybe we recruited his brother, the fullback, Steve Vinson. Number two athlete in the country who runs a 4-3-2-40. It'd be tempting, but I don't think that we have that kind of pull just yet. And the rest of the top 100, we do have two other guys. A defensive end, John Williams. He's going to be composing beautiful music for us while also blowing up opposing teams, uh, running backs and quarterbacks. Definitely adding him. <laughs> uh, I mean, a 77 overall defensive end pre-scout. You love to see it relatively quick, strong as heck as well. And William Wilson, <laughs> what a name from Mansfield, Ohio, has us eighth on the board. We'll add him as well. I'm going through some of these players, the number one corner in the class. Uh, he's from Pennsylvania and he's looking at teams in the SEC, but we've got an A on conference prestige. We've got an A on playing style. I might add him to the board just to see uh, if we can sway him in our favor. He's quick. He's got pretty solid coverage stats. He's maybe not great at tackling, but he runs a 4-3-2-40 at the corner position, which could be absolutely huge. And I don't quite think that we're there with Jason Miller, but we might be here with this number one uh, recruit in the country, Greg Smith. He's from Florida, but again, conference prestige and playing time. Kind of big draws. I'm adding him as well. So we added seven prospects there. Let me go ahead and find a few more especially ones that like us. Easiest, of course, just to look at the best or the top guys that actually want to play for us. Eric Lee, 72 overall running back from in-state. He's kind of a power back, which is what we just picked up last year, but he likes us. I feel like it's not bad to have a power back on the roster. So I guess I'm going to add him. Uh, I'll go through and try to fill up our board, and then I'll jump back in when it's time to scout these guys. All right, well, I've added a ton of guys. Uh, there were some other fun names that I saw in there. I'm excited to see what this guy could do. Darrell, well, probably Darrell Owens, but Darrell Owens, the big old D.O. <laughs> wide receiver. I think he's supposed to be pretty quick. 96 speed, just a 76 acceleration, like a freight train. Once he gets up to speed, nobody's going to stop him, but takes him a little bit to get there. He's not the best at catching, but a nice bit of route running. We could find a use for something like that. How about all the players that are like supposed to be incredible? Do we have anything that just absolutely stands out? Brandon White doesn't seem too terrible. Good finesse moves, 88. Good tackle. Decent hit power. Play recognition is serviceable. He's decently quick. I mean, that guy just sounds... Like a really solid player no matter what. Quinton Holmes is really quick with pretty dang good coverage. 87 man, 88 zone. You would love to have that. He can jump as well. Just a true athlete. How about Greg Smith? Uh, is he a running back like we thought? Maybe a little bit. His catching stats are actually pretty solid. Actually, he's got good coverage. 87 man, 84 zone. And he's relatively quick. So that's probably what Greg Smith is. Is more of a D DB or something. Uh, I just, can we find like a nice gem or something or something that's just game breaking? John Williams getting us scores in more ways than one. Uh, I don't know. That could be interesting. It certainly would help out the, the band. Maybe we get a new fight song if we got him. Oh, I'm looking for though. Those gems, a couple of guys going up to that 80 mark. Uh, this, I mean, the board's going to look stacked. Uh, Tim Thornburg goes up there as well. The, the board is stacked for sure. <laughs> The question is, there's a plus seven gem on the kicker with 89 kick power. The question is, will we be able to get these guys? Because this is like absurd. If we manage to pick up a quarter of the players that we're finding, what is this? They're all around 80 overall. Jamal Neal, the lowest maybe so far at a 74. Yeah, our team could be incredible if we could just recruit this class decently. Right now, seven guys, 80 overall. And it's going to take a long time scrolling to get to guys below 80 overall. So if we can pick those guys up, we are definitely in a good spot. Let's take a look at some school rankings. Coach Prestige, obviously going to be an A+. We're one of the most successful coaches in college football right now. A Conference Prestige is good, so moving into the Big Ten has certainly helped us there. Um, hopefully with some success. Maybe if we beat Florida, we could jump the SEC. Get a couple of extra bonus points. Our championship contender. Well, that's uh, that's a uh, news to us. We're ranked 45th coming into this season. 
so we could skyrocket the championship contender rating with a big win week one. Stadium atmosphere right now, max capacity 30,000. We're averaging 22,000. And Rynearson, I got to say it, there's a chance that we could be maybe renovating or building a new stadium. And that's actually a like goal on this video. I don't know what a good number is. 200, 150 likes, something around there. But if you guys think that we should build a new stadium since we've joined a new conference, maybe a, a fresh place to play, something that can hold all the fans that'll be coming in from the, uh, the surrounding towns that now care a little bit more about the Grey Boys. I don't know. Let me know in the comments as well as liking the video if you guys think that we should replace Rynearson. Coach stability is pretty rough. That's just because coordinators are all over the place in this game. Academic prestige is struggling. Uh, and so is everything else. We need to start getting players drafted. We need to... Well, having success on the field, we definitely do. But a D plus for our athletic facilities. Program tradition is just going to take time. Uh, campus lifestyle, you would expect to be going up a little bit. At least it's not a D minus, but uh, television exposure is. So we need to win our televised games so, so importantly this year. All right, well, it feels like it's been an hour, but let's go ahead and start the season. Let's get in towards this Florida game. We had two all-conference players, and we found our three gems. Uh, Let's hold off on... No, let's take a look at our preseason All-Americans. Screw it. We'll, we'll see who it is that they like for us. It was all conference, so I don't think we have anything here. Uh, I'm sure Florida's got to have a couple. If you're the number one team in the country, you have to have something. Uh, the left guard, Eric Galloway. Is that it? They also have a defensive tackle, Lionel Barber. I'm sure he's going to eat us up. And Paul Lee, a linebacker. And okay, it's the defense, Ben Adams. Uh, that scares me. Defensive Florida looking real good. All right, enough dilly-dallying. Number one team in the country. I'm a little bit scared. They're only a B-plus team, though. Florida, that's a low overall. That's like low 90s. They are obviously going to be favored to win. That defense is an A-, minus, which, again, is going to scare us, and it's going to cause some problems. But we have a chance to do some damage. They've got LSU listed as a rival twice. Really, really hate them, I guess. Can we come out and do something? No shaky bars. The Gators a 90 overall to our 77 this year. We jumped up five overall in one off season. They've got an 86 offense, but a 92 defense. Uh, and that defense, yeah, well, that could cause some problems for us. We're going to go all white on the road. Why not? We'll give it a shot. Florida, gosh, they have some really interesting stuff. I really like some of their throwback helmets. And I think that we'll kind of do something like that. At least a throwback helmet, probably. Hmm. I like orange throwbacks, though. So maybe maybe we change things up even more, though. Blue throwback helmet. Give me the blue pants. And we'll do an orange jersey. It's a weird look for Florida. It's a lot of blue and orange. But that's what we're giving the Gators this time around. Actually, before I jump ahead of myself, we're going to have to change uh, our defense. I'm fairly certain. Coach Central, because what we do here is we take the playbook of our coordinators. So if we go to our defensive coordinator, uh, let's go maybe by alphabetical, easy to find Eastern Michigan. What does uh, Venables run? I, I'm struggling with the alphabet recently. Venables, defensive style, a 4-2-5. You know, I don't mind it. Really, really useful that we pick up uh, a coordinator that is using the defense that we were using last year so the guy is not having to learn a whole new system and we'll be familiar with the play calling and that'll certainly give us a chance all righty well uh, they're top players we can expect 90s 97 96 96 the linebacker who's a preseason all-american the guard that's a preseason all-american and then their kicker for us well, we've got two guys at 84, much higher than last year, and then Frank Blair's at an 82, so <laughs> I just, I have nothing to take away from that other than this is probably going to be a struggle. Well, here we are, Camping World Stadium to open up the season in the Camping World kickoff. Against the number one Gators, what can we do? Maybe starting off the season with a win on the coin toss would be big, and that is Tails. Uh, let's start with the ball. I want to see what the offense can do today. 
Well, Frank Blair back to return as the Gators will kick this one off. And we'll, uh, well, I'm bringing this out five yards deep and the end zone. If we can get some decent blocks. Oh, no. Oh, no. Johnson, the third, missed his assignment there. We needed the freshman to set one good block for us. And he messed it up. And now we are starting inside the 15. Maurice Tate. Not going to let him throw right away. Let him hand off to Durham Finch Jr., the senior running back who gets us started with a huge carry up the middle. He's not down yet. Durham Finch, so close to just breaking free. How huge that would have been. Oh, my goodness. What if we take a look at the legs of Mo first? See what he can do on the ground on the read. We actually could be a threat this year with the read option, but Florida covers that one pretty well. 6'1", 220 pounds from Ohio as Tate is going to line up with an empty backfield. Looking to throw his first collegiate pass. The curl route is intercepted. Oh, no. That is a bad omen. Not going to be a pick six for the Gators. They really jumped that one. Maurice, hey, let it go. It's not going to happen every time we threw you into the fire. You'll get better. Gators. Well, they're going to start their first offensive possession of the season. Uh, inside the red zone, not looking good for us. And it looks like they want to run early. So we're going to try to bring the pressure. It's a keeper. No, quarterback pitches it out on the triple option. One tackle broken. And this is going to be a long day. Peter Watson walks it into the end zone. And the Gators take a 7-0 lead. Just like that. Well, let's just hope. The AI does a better job returning this kick than I did. Assuming it's in the end zone. And we're taking a touchback. That's a much smarter option than what I gave us a shot at. The offense. Well, they picked up 15 yards on the first drive. Uh, and then Mo threw the pick. Let's put it back on the ground. That seemed to be working. Triple option, Mo. Nothing doing. Just too good from the defense of Florida. This could be a real struggle. We we got to try to earn our money playing in a neutral site game. Offensive line holds honestly pretty well, but the DB comes in, tackles Durham Finch after a gain of three. So it's third and six, and we're going to have to go to the air. Maurice, a little bit cold. I don't think we have any favorable matchups, but we'll see what he can do. Stepping back to throw. I see it kind of coming over the middle. Lane can't hold on through the contact. So it's going to be a three and out, and we're going to have to give Florida the ball back. Looks like they want to bring everything on this one. So we'll just boot it away. Hope for a decent bounce. It's fair caught at the 35. And the Gators will have another chance to add to their lead. Man, I love this scorebook that the uh, revamp team put in. This is so awesome. I'm bringing pressure on this first down. Expecting a run. We'll see if the Blitz can do anything. Quarterback keeping it again. Getting the pitch out again. And the blocking is just too good from those wide receivers. Well, we're going to have to really focus on the QB on these options. Make him hand it off to the running back. They're going to step back to throw over the middle. It's complete for five yards. That one puts the Gators across midfield. This one going to be an option. Quarterback gets wrapped up. Nowhere to go on that play. So a loss of yard. It will be third and six. And uh, Harper, the quarterback, actually injured on that play. So a chance maybe... To get off the field, we'll be trying to bring some pressure. No, I got to back out. Try to get some coverage. Throwing on the little out route. It's wide open to Carpenter. Lee gets 18 yards on that play. I guess when you're Florida, you have the luxury of having two good quarterbacks. The backup comes in, makes the throw without missing a beat. The Gators are back on the move. And I'm going to just keep bringing some pressure. Seeing if we can stop them. This one a run. Towards the edge, a broken tackle, another broken tackle, and it's another first down for Dwayne Freund. Their offense was not even ridiculously highly rated, but they are doing a number to our defense right now. Moving, handing it off out towards the edge. Decent tackle from Logan there, but we give up five again. So quarterback had a bruised knee, but uh, the running back Freund actually also just got shaken up on that play. The Gators... Just uh, kind of falling apart. This one's going to be a triple option. They hand it off. First tackle is broken, but Graham gets there to finish the job. And again, we have them in a third, and this time seven yards. Wind knocked out of the running back, so he'll also be back soon. Bad news for us, good news for the Gators, as we'll expect to pass on this third down. We could potentially hold them to a field goal. 
Uh, but look at that little out route into the end zone. Robert Harley, 16-yard touchdown catch. Florida's going to go up 14-0 here in the first quarter. I'm getting a little bit worried. Really hoping the offense can try to get it together. I think this is why some uh, some people in the comments were saying maybe we play an FCS team. Try to, you know, work out these kinks against a much easier opponent. But as it stands, Florida playing like they could be the number one team. And we'll see if that continues. Again, this is a Florida team that uh, after losing in the second round of the playoffs, still managed to be ranked number one at the end of the season uh, after USC won the whole thing. So that's very interesting. Give Tate a nice easy throw for his first completion. Get him 13 yards and a little bit of confidence on that throw. And we can try to get Mo out of that funk. We're going to go with a little triple option. Jeff Fontenot, the pitch man on this play. And he might have the chance to get the pitch. No, Maurice Tate keeping it. Takes another shot, but picks up nine yards in the process. First drive that gets to midfield. We have not crossed midfield yet, though. A first down would do it. And we're going to hand it off up the middle to Durham Finch. And he's got more than the first down. Oh, we just got to score points on this drive. Really, it's just taken us a full quarter to settle in as we will try the play action on this first down line. Could be a little bit worrisome over the middle. Curtis comes down with a great throw from Maurice there. And we pick up another first down. First play for the offense over 20 yards on the season. It's always good to get it over with soon. Hope for a whole lot more of them. Probably not going to get it here as Stan Williams comes in, running to the edge. He gets a good six yards. After a big offseason for him, we have brought Stan back up to the second string. Again, always up for grabs, though. If Jerome impresses us more, he might get that job. This is our second third down of the game, and it will be the final play of the first quarter. Just barely getting it off in time. I'm letting Mo slide down. Don't want to let him keep taking hits, but use him as the threat that he is on the ground. Pick up the first down, and we can end the qu first quarter on a high note. This is a rough first quarter of the season for us. Down 14 nothing here, but we'll have a chance. Inside the 15. Just got to punch this one in. Fingers crossed. Durham Finch Jr. getting the carry to start the quarter. And he's going to fumble the ball. Curtis can't get there. It's Adams diving on it. It's the second turnover of the game. And that is a huge mistake from the senior running back. We cannot have that from Durham. At this point, his job is not even safe. So starting quarterback back in for Florida. This is going to be their hardest drive. The longest one that they'll have to endure so far quarterback scrambling he takes a hit and then slides down oh i was gonna really try to hit him with the hit stick although those of you with good eyes might have noticed that there's a very high chance i would have just completely whiffed he should have kept running we'll see what they do on this second and seven stepping back to throw i left the running back open for a second and uh-oh johnson the third getting burned on that curl route we're gonna need better from ron there I'm going to struggle not to call him Albert, if I'm being honest. As the quarterback takes off again. We can't stop these guys. I'm just going to dial up the pressure and bring a big blitz on this one. Quarterback step back to throw. That's not good. But he is scrambling, which is good. He fumbles the ball. Oh, and they recover it. We had so many chances, but just couldn't dive on it. Would have been huge to create a turnover of our own. Good from Rawls to force that ball free. To me, that showed that this offense can bleed. And if it bleeds, we can kill it. So just got to continue to bring this pressure and hope that we can slow these guys down enough to get them off the field. A little cover two as they actually hand the ball off up the middle. My goodness, we are getting gashed by the running game of Florida right now. Already 92 yards for them. Dwayne Freund, the starter. Well, he's averaging 11 a carry. That's pretty rough. Uh, they're going to run it again. This time, we actually stop him in the backfield. Had to bring a lot of pressure, but we get the job done on that play. The question is, can we string together a couple more stops? I'm not feeling confident. As, uh, well, the quarterback, I don't know, that looks like a designed run. Maybe a QB blast or draw for Marcus Harper. He's got the wind knocked out of him again. So, QB for Florida. 
Quick, great athlete, good at throwing the ball, but maybe a little bit injury prone. That is good news for us as they're going to hand this off. Logan makes the tackle and it's fourth and three. So the defense may be holding. We'll see if they kick this field goal or go for it. And it will be a field goal attempt. So I'm calling that a win. 17-0 is a lot easier to overcome than 21-0 is. The kick is good. Offense has got to just put together one full drive, though. What really hurts at this point is, uh, well, Florida gets the ball to start the third quarter. So we have to make the most of what's left of this second quarter. As we do bring that one out, Frank Blair just gets to the 20, though. I think it's safe to say this one is... Not going well at this point. 80 yards to pick up if we want to do anything. Oh, I'm sending them deep. They want to bring some pressure here. What are the odds that we could burn them? Send a couple guys deep. No safeties. I'm just hucking it deep. We'll see what Mo Tate can do. Oh, gosh. He way, way overthrew that one. Also, kind of got to remember myself that uh, these aren't Mac defensive backs these guys are actually pretty good at their jobs we'll go with the mid screen and that is a thing of beauty lane eight yards on the play sets us up nicely on or for a third and two should be much more attainable now i really do like that wide receiver mid screen give the ball back to durham finch jr here he's got some blocks oh my gosh he just got murdered in broad daylight by ben adams there never saw that hit coming and just got laid out I don't care that it's fourth and four inside our own 30. We're going for this. We have to score points on this drive if we want to even compete in the rest of the game. Give it to Smith and, gosh, fighting at the line to gain. Just barely falls over it. Big balls play there. Pays off. The drive will stay alive. And maybe we can start to build a little bit of momentum for the offense. Oh, that is just another terribly inaccurate throw from Mo. I do have to remember his accuracy, while it is better than Albert Johnson's, is still not great. So things could go wrong. Oh, Stan, so close to breaking that one. Well, we're one of three on our third downs. This one, seven yards is what we need to gain. Can we pick it up is the real question. Stepping back to throw over the middle. Fontenot catches it. It's a first down falling through a couple of defenders. That's like a 13 yard catch. Said catch a little bit weird there. I was gonna say carry changed it to catch in the middle of it. Came out catch. I don't know. Let's throw it again. <laughs> Stepping back. A. Oh, that's a pick. Oh, went right over the hands of Zach Wilson. He actually had a chance to grab that. All right. Well, let's try to get some positive yards. Oh, never mind. This is not the play I thought I called. I was gonna put it on the ground. I actually like this one. Uh, if. <laughs> That was a mistake. That was a mistake. That's a pick six. Durham Finch, fast, not fast enough. Three turnovers in the half, two of them self-inflicted. I'm just not used to playing with uh, a, a, or against a defense of this caliber. Florida's just, oh, they're taking it to me. This one at this rate is gonna be over before halftime, 24 to nothing. We are just getting thrashed. And again, returning a kick just to the 20. That was uh, Ron Johnson's first kick return. Not a great decision to bring it out. We have a minute and 27, but all of our timeouts to work with here as we will just pass the ball to stand, pick up a first down and go in the hurry up. Desperately trying to find some sort of points before the half comes to a close uh good news is we can now scramble great news is we've got wilson oh he couldn't catch it i was late making the throw had to make sure to set the feet and it's incomplete and they left the tight end open this hurts that we couldn't really get it to him give it another chance here through the air on second and ten they're bringing a lot of pressure outside the pocket motate running one Oh, one diving tackle miss. Mo not quick enough, and he's injured already on the game. This is a disaster. So Albert, well, I didn't expect to see him, but Johnson back in on the game. Third and nine. Let's see if he can step up and make a nice play over the middle. Font no comes down with it, and the drive stays alive. If Albert wins his starting job back, I'm going to lose my mind. 
fully thought we had a new quarterback this year, but Albert coming in, showing some poise, maybe earning that role. Good handoff there. We're planning on taking the timeout, so just use the ability to run while we had it. 38 seconds left. Just back spasms for Maurice Tate, so we'll get him back. But if Albert can lead this team on a drive here, well, that would have been nice. Get to take the timeout. We are about to have guys wide open there. Just a little bit late throwing the ball there. Maurice back in. Uh, Well, we're going to try to throw. Third in a mile. It is worth throwing. I just don't have the time to wait for these guys to get open, and Maurice is injured again. Feels like we got a two-quarterback system here. I do have to continue to go for this, though. You can't go for it once inside your own 30 and then stop going for it. So fourth and about three miles to go, and we'll see if we can bring this in. They're bringing a lot of pressure, just waiting, throwing it. Williams out of his reach. Quarterbacks just aren't finding their man today, and that's a turnover on downs. Stan Williams definitely would have had a chance to get the first down there, but it's just incomplete. No opportunity to get to the ball. They're going to step back and throw this all over it, getting the tackle, forcing Florida to take their first time out. And you would think our defense with uh, Venables leading the way would be doing a little bit better, but just too good of an offense right now for our athletes to compare against. Quarterback fumbles the ball. Carter picks it up. He tried to scramble but just lost control. We got 16 seconds and a prayer to find the end zone. Maurice, no, Albert. I forgot Maurice just got hurt again. Well, Albert, this is your chance. Can you lead us to the promised land on this drive? I'm not feeling confident. We kind of just got to go for it. Heave it up. Let Fontenot get it. He catches it. He broke the tackle, broke another, and Fontenot into the end zone. 49 yards with just nine seconds left on the half. Albert Johnson, he might be our starting quarterback again. It's 24 to seven. We might have a chance in the game. Actually, we got to go for two here, don't we? If we convert all our two-point conversions and hold them scoreless, we could get to 24 points and tie them up with just two more scores. Easier said than done. Let's see if we can complete this one through the air. A was open. I threw it too late. It's incomplete. Oh, that hurts quite a bit. Maurice Tate out for the rest of the game with a strained knee. Thankfully, it's not longer of an injury. But that means Albert has an entire half to really wow us and get that starting job back feel like we're in one of those lose-lose situations where, you know, it's just going to hurt a quarterback. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> they broke the, they're breaking tackles left and right. And we knocked Dwayne Freund out of bound after he picks up 17 yards. But like I was saying, you know, switching out quarterbacks is just going to hurt their morale. If we do it too much, we could be in a lot of trouble this one. A little Hail Mary. Try to get there in position. It's incomplete. Okay, no more pain this half. We only gave up 24 points. And we aren't being shut out. So I guess that's okay. At the half. Oh, we got a lot of work to do. Defense needs to figure it out. And the offense certainly needs to work on quite a bit. But maybe with a new quarterback heading the way, we could have some sort of chance. The Albert Johnson redemption arc begins here. Defense has to get the stop first. I don't know. It's just going to take a huge effort for both sides of the ball for us to stand a chance at competing for a win here. Uh, you know, we're playing in Florida's backyard, and it certainly feels like it. We'll see what happens here, though, for the rest of the game. Kicking the ball off to start this third quarter. I would love another turnover. We know their quarterback is uh, liable to fumble. We just need him to, to start running again. Start trying to strip the ball intentionally, maybe. Wish that we could, you know, give that direction to the players. Be like, only strip, try to strip the ball. If this guy's carrying it, they're going to hand it off to the running back. Freund up the middle again. He's going to continue to obliterate us. I got to say, this is not a good look. Uh, this is not what you want to have happen. The first game after moving up into a power five uh because we are gonna get clowned on on espn 
Really starting to question whether or not we'll belong. Obviously, Florida's not a conference opponent. They're the number one team in the country, but it's just not a good look to get beat this badly. Defense temporarily able to get a stop as they go trips left. Expecting a run to the right, honestly. They're going to hand it off. Running back goes up the middle. Oh my gosh, Freud just got popped. I think that was by London. Yeah, we got Lo London and Logan as the linebackers. And it was London filling the gap there and just ending that man's career. Throwing this one short of the line again, but we couldn't get to him. Great cutback from Lee Carpenter there. We had our chance to get off the field and just couldn't capitalize. That's, that's pretty brutal. You hate to see it. Expecting a run on this one. We're bringing pressure, but they bounce it to the edge. Miller can't get the tackle. And it's London again, making a big hit, and making sure that he goes down. Tried to bring the pressure, but they just, they're too good. Counter this time. Kind of bit on it, was able to recover, and we do have them in a third and five. Best case scenario here probably is just for us to hold them to a field goal attempt. I'm going to use your carpenter, see if we can get pressure on this quarterback. We felt it for a second, they're throwing to the end zone. Oh, Lee Carpenter just mossed him, 25 yards. We had a chance at the pick, but just couldn't get into position. Into double coverage, what a throw, what a catch. Florida's going to take a 31-6 lead. I think it's safe to say that we're getting chomped right now. Uh, we're going to bring this out, see what Johnson can do. Hope for the best on this return. Oh, great cut from Johnson, and he's off to the races. Not going to have the speed, but giving us a 52-yard return, and we'll start with the ball at midfield. It's what you love to see from the grandson of a true Gray Boys legend. As we're just going to let Albert Johnson keep throwing the ball. Why not? If guys want to get open, that's even better. Albert comes into the game, starts three of four through the air with a touchdown. That's pretty impressive. How about the handoff to Stan Williams? Blocking holds. He gets to the corner and gets us another first down. The problem here is that I just feel like maybe we need to go in a massive hurry up. I'm worried about how much time will be on the clock as John Wilson makes a nice catch for six yards. And yeah, it's time to blitz out some plays. It's really going to rely on the wide receivers playing perfectly as there's a nice open throw to Lane. I was worried that was going to be late, but we get the completion. That one moves the chains again, so it'll stop the clock. Three minutes left here, throwing it short. Fontenot comes down with it, and Jeff... Gets us inside the red zone, inside the 15 with a big catch. The poise from Albert to come in under these circumstances and absolutely deliver as I got to throw that one away. And oh, thank goodness that's not an intentional grounding. Just going to say it, I'm not certain the freshman QB is able to make that poised of a throw away. Probably does just turf it and get us the penalty. How about the triple option? They're worried about Albert. He gets the pitch out to Jerome who breaks a tackle. But just doesn't quite pick up a whole lot. That was a lot of fighting for four yards. What if we try a little play action out of this pistol? The full house stepping back to throw over the middle. <laughs> Gosh, these DBs are quick. One second, a guy has a little bit of separation. The next second, it is completely closed down. As we're going to go for this. I think it's our best option. We'll see what we can do. Stepping back to throw. I'm looking for Stan Williams. He comes down with it. He's short of the line to gain. Turnover on downs just barely. All right. Well, this is all or nothing. I'm bringing out the goal line. We're going to kind of audible. I was going to go just a full blitz, but... Oh, we had the chance to drop him for a loss, and instead they get five yards. That might be the most painful little stiff arm cheese that we've seen. We would have had them backed up at their own three, and instead it's just going to be a handoff now. Well, that could be a touchdown. Green needs to make this tackle. Oh my goodness, we are struggling. Danny Brady, 41 yards out to midfield, and the Gators, well, certainly uh, no danger of a safety now. This is about as... Close to disaster as we could have expected. That's a good job from the defense. We'll drop him for a loss of four on the play. But the problem is now we have to stop him on second down and third down. We certainly have not been good at that so far this season or this game. 
I guess the season was technically correct. They go to Tremaine Vincent for seven. And we've stopped them on one third down, but they still scored points. This is our first chance to truly get off the field. We'll see what we can do. I see guys open all over the place. Quarterback takes a sack, though. He had a man running straight to the end zone, wide open on the right side of the field. But we get the stop. So we can send Blair back to return a punt. Although we'll expect the touchback. And man, the thing that really is upsetting is the clock situation. Inside one minute left in the third quarter. Although a returnable ball for Blair. If he can get to the corner, he could be gone. Just the kicker to beat. Cuts it inside. Makes him miss. Not quite quick enough. But again, the special teams trying to wake this team up. An absolutely massive punt return to get us inside the 35. And again, it's up to Albert Johnson uh, and the rest of the offense to try and do something. Oh, I thought Fontenot was going to cut more than that. I tried to use room because I expected that ball to be thrown at the sideline. Uh, and then we get hurt. Okay, need good blocking on this counter. First one's picked up. The second one is two, but Simmons just isn't quick enough. He only gets four yards on the play. And the clock is really running down here on this third quarter now. So we need a miracle. Send Jerome on the seam. Albert, nothing doing it. Look how covered all our guys are. If Albert is having to scramble for yards, you know that you're in trouble. It's fourth and five, just like that. One of three now on the day on our third down conversions. But we're just going to let this go into the fourth quarter. It will take an absolute miracle to come back in this one. I got to say, I don't have a whole lot of faith, but maybe some of you guys do. Uh, one, one like equals one point scored here in the fourth quarter, so maybe smash the like button. Man, do I always feel a little bit silly saying stuff like that, but it's true. Uh, and it helps out the channel more than I think you guys realize. So again, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to hit the like. Sub if you haven't. Uh, and if you do sub, we can just throw it to Jeff Font. No, oh, never mind. We can, we can throw it straight at... Uh, like a defensive end dropping into coverage and have another turnover on downs. Uh, that's, that's rough. I mean, we managed to put up 246 yards of offense. They're only at like 280 something. So we're not getting blown out of the water, but it's certainly not good. Strip this quarterback. Oh, we gotta force another fumble here. Just cut off the running back from the pitch there and we had our chances. Just didn't quite take it. Second and eight. We'll see. They will step back to throw. Quarterback scrambles. And they're going to call it a sack. Third and nine. Maybe a chance at a three and out. We know that the pass is coming. Can we stop them from getting it off? Carter. No pressure. Oh, no. Miller came up to try and make a hit. And it's a huge play for the Gators as they get inside the red zone. That is the exact opposite of what we needed. Tried to make a play on the ball, just was a step late. Oh, man, this game hurts. This really hurts. I thought we were going to be so competitive coming into this matchup, and it has been a real disappointment. At this point, honestly, just kind of out of desperation, I'm bringing blitzes pretty much on every single play, hoping that we can cause some sort of disruption. Second and seven, QB steps back. We... Oh, gosh. Well, he, like, probably jammed his helmet or his hand. Just smacking somebody on the helmet there. Again, we get the Gators into a, a third long, but I don't think we'll be able to capitalize. Shift some guys over. See if we can make a play. Quarterback, five wide. Plenty of time in the pocket. Feeling some pressure. Throws it, and it's caught into quintuple coverage, and it's first and goal with the one. Marcus Harper. Just throwing dots all over the field. Nothing that we can do to stop this quarterback. He needed to stay injured. We're not that lucky. Now he's going to walk into the end zone. 38-6. to six. Florida is not letting off the gas pedal in this one. If this is the way this game is going, we might be in for a rude awakening on this season. Uh... I'm going to call it now. I think making a bowl game will be an achievement this year. Obviously, I would love to be wrong, but it's not looking good so far. Let's try to get some throwing off. Hope for the best. Maybe throw another pick. Gosh, dang it. Oh, no. Oh, we're getting obliterated.
I've never been hurt so much in my life. Just all my expectations for the season crashing down to earth in record time. I don't even know if we got off the launch pad. We do get a nice sack there. School record for sacks in a game now for Carter. What can we do with that though? Time tick, tick, ticking away. Try to bring another blitz, maybe expecting a run. It is going to be a handoff up the middle. And, well, we gave up pretty much all the sack yardage. But again, third and nine, probably no chance that we get off the field here. We've been getting lit up on third downs all game long. Florida, six of eight on their conversions. Uh, only one drive where they haven't scored in this entire game. What can we do on this third and nine as they are just letting the clock burn out? That's... That's a little bit rude. Give us a chance, Gators. Well, I guess I can use this as an opportunity to try to jump the snap. Don't think I was offside. It doesn't really matter. Force fumble. Johnson, the third, recovers it. Oh, my goodness. He's making some huge plays today. Making the late Ron Johnson the first proud. As we will step back again, looking to throw. A might have been open. I'm just heaving it up. We'll see what Jerome can do. Oh, gosh. Both guys fighting for the ball eventually hits the ground. Oh, man. That's just a shame. We're so close to having a really good offense. It's just not quite there as Albert just gets tripped up with a running back with so much space in front of him. If I'm able to get the pitch off there, that's easily a first down, if not a whole lot more. But that's just not meant to be. Stepping back to throw. Let's just get a completion. This is four down territory, obviously. Zach Wilson gets us two inches away from the goal line. And this is probably the worst play call of the day. But I'm trying it anyways. QB blast with Albert Johnson. Hey, look at that. He got the first down and somehow didn't fumble the ball. Playing for a little bit of pride at this point. All I want from these guys is to break 10 points on the day. As, well, there's an open receiver, John Wilson. Nice little catch to him. 13 yards, gives us another first down. Not really worried about stopping the clock here. Uh, unless we get super close to the end zone. A counter to Jerome Simmons. Uh, it finds him, well, squared up with a DB in open field there. He's definitely not able to win that battle. So it's second and 11 with a minute left in the game. They want to bring pressure. This could hurt uh, as Fontenot is, oh, maybe Zach Wilson. Okay, another completion and another first down. Let me try this triple option again. See if we can get anything going for us. Goodwin is the uh, guy that we could hand it off to. Robinson, the pitch man, he's going to be slow as all heck. He got six yards, though. I guess that's not terrible. And now just 30 seconds left in the game. I just want to get out of this godforsaken state as soon as possible. Oh, my goodness. Quick, someone. Take away this controller before I make any more terrible reads throwing the football. This has been brutal all game long. Although, that's a great read to Curtis. That gets us inside the red zone. I'm taking a timeout. Why not? I think Albert still might be having a better game. Uh, I just don't know. I, I'm not going to say he's earned the starting job yet. B was open. This is a pick. Oh, I'll take an incompletion over an interception. Pretty much every time. Not really sure if it makes any sense to even be going for it at this point, but... Oh, shit. Safety! Get him! How is that not a safety? How is that not a safety? One, two... Three, four, five, five steps before he goes into the end zone and he takes a knee and it's not a safety. We've been jobbed by the refs. We needed those points. Oh, that hurts so much. Victory formation for the Gators. They'll take a knee after a controversial call and the clock will just expire there. Oh my goodness, I can't believe they would do us dirty like that. 38 to 6 at the end of the day. I don't even know if it was a fun one. Starting quarterback got knocked out for the game. Uh, and we got absolutely obliterated. <laughs> it wasn't even close. I don't know if we ever stood a chance. Especially after we brought the opening kickoff out inside the 15. 
Couple of nice plays, couple of good forced fumbles, decent moves from the special teams. Albert threw an absolutely beautiful touchdown pass. But beyond that, uh, disappointing uh, pretty much everywhere on the field. At the end of it, we did outpass Florida. We held them to 195 through the air, but it's mostly because we allowed them to run for 165 on the ground. We put up 69 ourselves, which normally would be nice, but not so much today. Five turnovers on the day. We created two, almost created three. Should have probably created three, but it's not enough. And uh, just a, a rough day at the office, that's for sure. Jeff Fontenot, our offensive player of the game, he had the one touchdown, really the one thing of note for us. And Troy Carter, the left end, three sacks and a fumble recovery. That's a good game defensively. So we started the season ranked number 45. I think that that's probably going to drop after this game. We do have our recruiting to do, so we won't be advancing the week because unfortunately this is the end of this episode. We'll finish scouting the players on our board and see uh, who we need to replace immediately and then face off against a top 15 army as well in the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, again, please feel free to hit the like button. And if you're not already, please subscribe. Like recently, it's like 75% of you that will watch this video aren't subscribed. So if you are here and you're enjoying the content and you're not already subscribed, please feel free to do that. Uh, I think by the time this video goes up, we should be over 4,000, which is awesome. It's been an incredible start to the new year on the channel. So uh, welcome to everybody that's new. And again, thank you to everybody who's returned after you've liked and subscribed, of course. Head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.